Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check out what we got tonight, the Gladius Mini. We're gonna be testing in the pool here. I'm really anxious to see how that uh, pitch lock works and this third motor back here in the back, this third vertical motor. We're gonna put it on the iPad, um, we're gonna put the tether on, hook it all up, throw it in the pool, and just kind of do a nighttime, check out the lights and stuff, line of sight, and see how it operates in the pool. So this should be kind of fun, hang in there. Let's get started with the initial Gladius Mini water test. So this is gonna be the first time I've ever had it, had it in the water, so hopefully it does well, but that's what we're here to test, right? So just setting it there in the water. We're pretty much ready to go. So right away, I wanna turn on these lights and that's with the left roller. There we go. That will shine some light on the subjects here. I just have a few things in here. I got like some stuff I usually use for my sub reviews in the pool. So let's see, let's go ahead and just arm this thing by pressing the right lock button. And it is armed, wow. So it went and shot itself down quite a ways. And let's see what we wanna do. So we wanna move around. So I'm using the right stick to go forward and I'm using the left stick to turn left and right. And it's in really slow mode it seems right now. So you see the low, it's in super low mode. I'm gonna start recording, just so we have some type of recording of this thing. And it should be in 4K 30 frames per second. So, um, not that it really matters in this pool, but uh, just to show you how the video is here in this pool. Wow, it looks really clear. It looks like they've really improved as far as I can see that Wi-Fi link from the original Gladius. So really liking that. So the depth lock, this is amazing. The depth lock is keeping it down under the water, 0.3 feet, negative 0.3 feet. So that might be a little bit off. So I might wanna calibrate that actually for the next one. There's a calibration you can do because I can't even actually surface. That's interesting. Let me press this depth lock button on the left again let's see what it does current mode stabilized let's see if we can go up now there we go now I'm going up that's really awesome so I'm just kind of going up and down let me bring it a little bit closer here now keep in mind this is in super low oh man they did such a good job with all these motors it's just keeping itself perfectly level as I'm bringing it around that's awesome so keep in mind if it's close and you have electronics and stuff like the controller, which is not waterproof, you do not want it to splash on this thing. So what I have going on right now, guys, is I have the uh, skimmer running and the filter. So it's actually blasting some water to kind of mimic some current. There's a uh, jet over there and it's blasting it down towards me. So that's what it's doing in a little bit of a current. You can see how it is moving backwards. Let's pull it back down. It's actually going up very slowly too by itself. So this is full throttle forward in low mode and this is full yaw to the left. So you can see how it's super slow in low mode, but still, you know, super controllable. Let's try uh, switching it up to medium mode. So I'm just pressing on the screen to the M on the bottom. So this is medium mode and let's see how fast it is now. So you can see the turning ability is quite a bit faster. Look at that, the forward speed, a lot faster. Man, they really did a great job on this thing being really precise. Let's go into this current here and let's see how much it kind of pushes it away. Oops, I think I just accidentally stopped the recording. Like I was trying to click the right roller, but I clicked the right button so I click the recording again we should be recording again so this is medium let me get a little bit closer so you can kind of see what's going on I'm gonna turn these lights all the way up I had only had them at like 30% here we go now this is a hundred look how bright that is especially you can see it through my hat cam so this is full speed forward in medium mode that's full stick and then full right so it's still quite speedy but it's really controllable speed there so if you, of course, probably if you have a lot of current, here's full yaw to the left. That's how fast it is, you can see on the hat cam. 
in medium mode and you can do multiple inputs too i was turning and i was pushing down at the same time with my left stick you can see how stable that is man it's one of the most precise subs it is the most precise sub i have ever um dove with right now just look at this just staying locked on i'm going to press depth lock it's going to shoot down to the bottom and it's going to just stay right there now let's see if we can move around on the bottom and how well it just keeps its depth awesome so i'm not touching the um depth control right now at all the depth stick all i'm doing is zooming around on the bottom and it really is doing a great job at just staying down there on the bottom at a certain depth now i'm going to switch press the h on the bottom here and go into high mode and this should be pretty interesting this should basically make all the controls much faster all the motors actually should be much quicker so here's our yaw in um, high mode yeah so quite a bit faster yaw left and right there's right yaw nice and fast let's go full stick forward right now cool that's full stick forward and that's full yaw to the right so it looks like it slows down a little bit when it starts to turn wow but it is just really responsive oh uh oh oh disconnected that's the first disconnect all right we were disconnected from the wi-fi that's too bad man bummer that's what the original one did the lights came back on are we it just reboot itself uh oh oh man i was hoping there we go okay we're back and i'm gonna turn the lights up again if i can there we go there's our lights our lights are back okay so i'm gonna turn the lights all the way back up and we're gonna go back into high mode here here we go there we go unlock looks like it defaults to depth lock mode so keep that in mind i'm going to take depth lock off and we want to do a couple other things so still in high mode just spinning around showing its speed it is very fast just about as fast as the um, version one and two but it's much more stable because of that third motor in the back i'm so excited about that man just awesome so the main thing with this other than stability in all these modes is this depth lock feature that allows you to do pitch lock as well so let's try this so the right roller is the pitch lock and let's see how this works so i'm rolling it oh nice i'm using my right index finger and i'm rolling it to the right and look at the sub it's turning up it's facing the surface and it's locking itself there and I can still move my you know my depth up and down my depth stick and watch when I press forward it's locking that as it's going forward that's awesome so say I want to inspect stuff from down below look at this man this is great I can do this depth lock mode Let's see how far we can pitch it up. This will be kind of interesting. So I want to kind of get down, but I want to, I'm rolling it all the way to the right. So that looks like the maximum pitch up. So it looks like it's at maybe a 45 degree angle just about. You see that there in the hat cam? The lights are pointing at us now. So this will be great for like, inspecting stuff from underneath like hull inspections on boats and stuff and it's such a small package now especially when they get the backpack ready it's going to be awesome so that's pitching it up let's try to do depth lock in this mode so i'm pressing depth lock right now oh awesome <laughs> so i'm just like touching the bottom i think the depth lock might be wanting to go deeper than it can you know what I mean? So it's kind of struggling. It's trying to push down even deeper than the pool is deep. So there we go, just inspecting things. We can move around in that pitch angle, locked pitch angle. 
rolling it left rolling this roller to the left this is an awesome setup here really really like it I'm gonna take the depth lock off because I want to pitch down now so I'm gonna get a little bit of a little bit shallower and then I'm gonna pitch roll this roller I'm rolling the right roller now to the left look at that awesome so I get the angle I want and then I just stop right there I can depth lock it at this depth or I can just free depth it up and down as I want of course I'm, I have it off right now because I'm up here and so it's locking the depth uh, angle for us right now I have my depth lock off but the angle is locked so I can inspect this giraffe I can kind of slowly pivot around it I'm going ahead and I'm putting a little bit of yaw in just because the current is pushing the sub sideways you know what I mean let's go inspect this car a little bit so we'll go over to this car rolling right to get my pitch back up a little and then I'm gonna go forward here still locked at the same pitch lock it's just gone down a little bit to the ground I'm getting a little bit of current push I'm gonna go into low so you can get some really light movements so I'm like full stick forward and low there we go go up a little bit I'm like right in front of that jet I'm gonna get away from that jet that jet's kind of screwing me up so keep in mind the low mode is maybe even a little bit too slow so I'm gonna go into medium mode we're just locked onto target and again I can roll left and it'll pitch me more down if I want to. For some reason it seems like it's pulling back. I don't know why. Maybe just, is, this, is the current that much? No, that's the sub doing that. So the sub is actually kind of pulling itself back a little bit too much when I'm pointed down. Let's see if I make it flat again, straight. And what's cool is on our um, little gauge on the left of the screen here, we can see the sub's orientation too. Cool, so looking good. Um, let me start recording again. I think I re stopped recording for a while. I just hit record again on there. Nothing, you know, too much to see in this pond, this pool, but it, at least it's something. So for searching, check that out. You can just easily skim the top and keep it up above the bottom of the of the ocean or lake or whatever you're in and just have it pitch lock like this and scanning whatever you're doing this is awesome man it's working really good hopefully you guys can see that in the hat cam how it has just locked its pitch and of course if i it looks like if i push it really hard forward just the hydrodynamics of the thing it's going to start going down like if i'm full throttle forward you see how it went down into the pool so that's probably going to be more effective on very slow moving like in low slow movements so guys to tell you the truth i honestly have not even calibrated this yet so i could probably get a little more precision by running through the on app calibrations but so far, I mean, even without doing that, look how great it's working. And it does look like this does a really good job so far. I'm just looking at strictly FPV now and just kind of controlling it over to this filter. Looking great. This will be really awesome for ocean exploration, man. And, you know, we'll probably get some sand in it when we go in the ocean. And uh, we'll see how it deals with sand and also night diving. I mean, this thing is just... The lights are fantastic on this. So I think night diving will be pretty awesome too. Dimming the lights so you can see how it looks in the video. We're only at 18%. 7, 4, 1%. That's how bright it is. And then off. Back up a little bit. 75. And there's 100 there. So that's full brightness. Just a little bit worried about the Wi-Fi. We had that one disconnection and i really hope that doesn't happen in the water but at least with this one you always have the tether on the version one or two remember they had the floating buoy so you could throw your buoy out there and then uh, if you had a disconnection 
that might be a little harder to get the buoy but in this one you have no option to throw the Wi-Fi module in the water so you always have this tether to pull it back if you needed to but so far so good look at this I'm completely off the controls and it's just kind of been moving with the current just a little bit it's really good at locking its heading look at that heading lock it's just locked on solid it's not hasn't moved an inch man fantastic and just if I slowly move my right pitch roller just pitching and locking fantastic another thing too is I hope they can possibly implement when right clicking in the pitch roller or clicking and holding or something I want to see it go right back wait did it go back to level it might have actually gone back to level hold on I don't want to speak too soon let's get this thing closer and see if that did it it seemed like I did if I held it hold on so we're gonna get right here and I'm gonna pitch I get up a little bit I'm gonna pitch up and watch this I'm gonna pitch all the way up as far as it can go there we go like about a 45 watch this if I hold it in and let go it does okay they took care of it I take that back <laughs> they totally did they took care of that man that's so awesome so if you want to immediately go back to level you just hold in that right roller button it clicks in and there you go you're back to level immediately let's see if we do that again without anything happening yeah it's already at level so it doesn't have to do anything let's go ahead and pitch downwards I want to pitch all the way down. I want to see how long it takes if I just click and hold it real quick. So an immediate click doesn't do anything. But let's see if I click and hold it for like one second. One, one thousand. Yep. So at least one second and it'll go back to level. Just fantastic, guys. Really, really um, ecstatic about the work they've done on this so this is going to be one of the best i've tested if not the best so far i didn't even get the um, gladius version 2 in the water but this mini with that third motor in the back just phenomenal absolutely then if we want to stop the motors from spinning and everything all we do is press the lock button on the controller it locks and it looks like it has a slight positive buoyancy with this freshwater module on it and then the freshwater here we'll see how it is in the ocean with that saltwater module but um man that is that <laughs> just just really excited about this and you can see i mean this is these kind of subs they are going to flood just like a, a regular submarine ballast so you can see all the water is leaking out of it but internally is where it's sealed on all the components. It just needs to have the water infiltrate, you know what I mean? To actually work the way it's supposed to. Man, that video looks really clear on my screen. Look at that, even out of the water, it just looks fantastically crisp and clear. You can see that compass on the top is also moving around. Let's see if it's accurate. North should be right around here. Yep that's accurate it's already calibrated for compass so the next dive guys is going to be in the water in the ocean we'll take this over to the ocean don't forget links in the description i hope you really enjoyed that i had a blast reviewing this in the pool with you just fantastic and i'll see you guys in the ocean test and also probably take it over to that waterfall pond especially with that pitch lock we'll be able to scan the bottom of the pool for that mavic pro i lost in there and see if we can recover it. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next video and review. Thanks for watching. <laughs>